Hey guys, it's CJ from Elevated Systems, and I've got something pretty over the top to show you. This is not some fancy editing trick. That is a base model M1 Mac Mini powering not one, not two, but four extended displays. We've got an LG 40 inch 2K by 5K ultra wide as the main display, along with two Samsung 28 inch 4K UHD displays in portrait and landscape orientation, and a 15.6 inch InnoCN 4K OLED panel. Now, I know what you're thinking. How in the world is this possible when the M1 and M2 Max can only support two displays? Well, that's where the 13-in-1 Display Link docking station from Mini Sapporo comes in. This dock uses some pretty impressive software and hardware to take a single USB-C output and turn it into not two, but three display outputs. So whether you've got a Mac, Windows, or Linux device that supports DisplayPort Alt mode, this hub will split your signal into three independent displays. And spoiler alert, it works. But of course, the big question is, how well does it work? What are its limitations? And what else can this hub do besides powering displays? Stick around and I'll give you the full scoop. The Mini Superl Display Link docking station comes well packaged. It's minimalistic and it's mostly recyclable, so big thumbs up there. And when you crack it open, you'll find the docking station itself, a 12 volt power supply, a braided USB-C cable, an instruction manual, and a thumb drive, which I assume contains the drivers. However, as I'm aware of sticking unknown media into my devices, I just downloaded the Display Link software from the source. This driver package needs to be installed before the hub will work. Once it's installed, it'll run the display link background process that will detect the connected displays and allow you to enable and disable the displays as well as to change the display orientation. The hub itself has two USB 2.0 ports as well as three five gigabit ports. Two of them are type A and one is type C. You also find a headphone jack on the front. On the back, there's the power input, the type C connection to your device, a 100 watt type C power delivery port, gigabit ethernet, and the display outputs. Speaking of which, you get three displays to work with. Display one is HDMI, display two is DisplayPort, and display three is either HDMI or DisplayPort, but you can only use one at a time, so keep that in mind. The dock costs between $159 and $200, depending on where and when you buy it. For the initial test, I connected the LG display directly to the Mac's HDMI output and set it as my main display, this would also be the equivalent of the built-in display on a MacBook or laptop. The InnoCN panel I connected to display one on the hub, then I connected the two Samsung displays via the two remaining DisplayPort hub connections. With everything connected, I was able to set the appropriate resolution, hertz, and arrangement in the Mac display settings, and was happy to discover that the three displays connected to the hub were in fact independent extended displays and not mirrored displays and each display also worked at its set refresh rate. Even though the Samsung displays didn't seem to indicate that, this is common with this test when you have multiple displays of differing resolutions and refresh rates connected to the same computer. They were operating at 60 Hertz. However, there was some perceptible lag or stuttering in the displays. This might not show up on camera, but apart from the UFO test, which has its own flaws, I did see an ever so slight stutter when dragging a window around the screen and even scrolling through a web page. Now, Mini Sapporo just says this dock can do three 4K 60 Hertz displays, but I also wanted to know if I could do a higher refresh rate. So I replaced the small panel with my Scepter 1440p 144 Hertz display. And while it couldn't do 144 Hertz, it did do a nice smooth 120, which is actually the best the Mac Mini can do over its HDMI. Other things I noticed that probably don't show up on camera like this are the color accuracy and brightness of all displays looked exactly as I would expect them to. The dock does support HDR and it looked awesome as usual on my OLED panel. I did try some other configurations. I connected the LG to the Display 2 dock output and it wasn't able to do the full 5120 by 2160 resolution, which is outside of its specs, but it could do 3440 by 1440 at the monitor's max 72 hertz. So if you have a 1440p ultra wide, it'll work on this. 
Now, one of the biggest problems I have on Mac desktops with multiple displays is every time the Mac restarts or wakes from sleep, the display arrangement can be all out of whack or one or more of the displays won't wake up. You have to redo the arrangement in the settings or unplug and plug in the cable. It's a Mac OS issue Apple refuses to address, probably because it encourages people to buy Apple displays. But every single time I reset or rebooted the Mac mini or woke it from sleep, the displays came back exactly as I had them set. Now, initially, whichever display was plugged into the Mac HDMI port would start as the primary display. So here, the Spectre was plugged into the Mac, but once I logged on, the main display switched back to the LG display as I had it set. Not only that, but after I rearranged the displays and tested other displays, as I set it back up with the original four monitors, it remembered how all the displays were arranged correctly when I booted up the Mac. However, when I rotated one of the Samsung displays in the display link menu, it did mess up the display arrangement in the Mac display settings. But again, once I reset that, it stayed like this every time. Now, because the display link software needs to initialize to make the extra displays work, I found that any windows or apps you have open on the extra displays will all move to the main display on a reboot. So if you have windows set up on your displays like a calendar over here, a music player over there, some email down there, you'll have to move them all back to the screens after a reboot. However, apps that open after you reset are fine. For example, I had Resolve set up in triple screen and it opened that way every time. Apart from testing refresh rates, I did see if it was maybe possible to get a fifth display working. So with four displays connected, I plugged in the small USB-C display into the open Mac Thunderbolt port, and I almost thought it was gonna work, but it didn't come on. I also tried to connect the Scepter with a USB-C to HDMI cable, and after resetting, it did turn on, but one of the Samsung displays connected to the hub didn't. So yes, four is the max you can do, on a Mac, I was able to get five and could get more with my Windows laptop. In addition to the display outputs, the hub also has more. And while I did test ports individually and got speeds exactly where I'd expect them to be, even faster than expected on the ethernet, I just decided to go for broke and fill every port and test them all simultaneously. So I have a keyboard and RF mouse dongle in the USB 2 ports, my Samsung T7 in the five gigabit type C, and an SD card and flash drive in the type A ports, all three display outputs are still in use, ethernet is connected, and I'm using the power delivery to power the NOCN display. And I'm using everything all at once, flashing the thumb drive, transferring eight gigs of images off the SD card, working with footage directly from the Samsung drive, streaming 4K YouTube, and everything is working. The displays aren't showing any performance problems, and the hub itself is barely warm to the touch. In fact, the base model Mac quit before the hub did, which confirms this setup is a little over the top. The M1 Mac mini is a pretty powerful little machine, but this is a bit more multitasking than it can take. However, the additional displays and the hub don't put much if any extra demand on the system resources. But again, this setup is over the top. I don't think too many people are looking to run four displays on a Mac mini, but there probably are some people looking to add a third display to their setup, maybe being able to drive a TV, or more probably the ability to dock an M1 or M2 MacBook Pro or Air into a two or three display setup. And this Mini Shapiro Hub makes that possible and it's almost perfect for it. The one big problem is the hub doesn't provide power delivery through this single connection. I tested it on my framework laptop and the host USB-C connection does not provide any power to the laptop. Now, from my rudimentary knowledge of how everything works to deliver three displays through a single cable, I'm pretty sure it's just not possible to also deliver full wattage power delivery through that same cable it just gets too noisy. So unfortunately, you can't get a single cable docking solution, but the dock does have the 100 watt USB-C power delivery. So at least you don't need a second power supply and it does work with a standard MagSafe cable.
there were a few problems I saw with the hub. First, while the displays always went back to how I set them up, the audio always defaulted back to the Mac mini internal speaker. Not really sure if this is a Mac OS issue or an issue with the hub, but either way, while you can use HDMI audio, you may have to reset it regularly. There's also the issue of display lag. While this isn't really an issue in most common computing tasks, it can be a bit distracting in creative endeavors if you're using the extended displays for things like video and motion graphics type work, you may encounter some stutters in your displays, but this is also very dependent on the actual displays you're using and its resolution and refresh rate. If I disconnect everything except the two Samsung displays, I didn't see any more lag, so I definitely recommend using matching displays because mixing resolutions and more importantly refresh rates is really what's going to affect the smoothness of your display response more than anything else. The last issue is a little nitpicky, but the dock, which is heavily marketed towards M1 and M2 Mac owners, is only available in this gray color, not silver to match most of the Macs they're meant to be paired with. Other than that, I think Mini Sapporo has again impressed us with their ingenuity and provided a hub that offers a feature lacking in many laptops, particularly the base model M series Max. Furthermore, its expandability options set it apart from other display docks available on the market. What are your thoughts on the Mini Sapporo Display Port Hub? Don't forget to leave a comment and show your support by hitting that like button. And if you want to stay up to date with the latest tech reviews, consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.